Hello, thank you so much for joining here today. We are going to wait a couple more minutes to see if anyone else joins our session here today. So I ask that we use this time to maybe gather any supplies, maybe some water, something you feel you may need to get started here today. This is going to be our time to simply just relax, go inward, and prepare ourselves for our session here today. Namaste and peace and blessings. I would like to thank you once more for joining me here today in our prenatal study group. We're going to use the next couple of minutes to simply relax and ground ourselves and prepare our bodies for our practice, for our study here today. I ask that we find our bodies in a comfortable seated pose. I am actually sitting in a chair today. So may you find any seat that feels good for you. Maybe you're on a yoga mat. Maybe you're on the bed, maybe you're also in a chair. Whatever you feel as though you need here today in this session, may you find that place as we are using the seated pose to help ground and root our bodies here today. Ensuring that our backs are nice elongated, meaning it is not sunken. We have control of our backs with our shoulders melted downward away from our ears. Our tummies are nice and tight. And maybe we can gaze our eyes down and close or close our eyes if that feels good for you. As we take a nice deep breath in, exhale. Breathe in deeply, exhale fully. As we breathe our palms, our heart center coming into a seated prayer Maybe our thumbs are touching our sternum, if that feels good for us. As we gaze our eyes down or close our eyes, may we hang out here in silent meditation for three natural breaths. Breathe in. Exhale. Taking a moment to notice how the breath feels within the body. Taking a moment to notice how the grounded seat feels within the body. Are we grounded? Are we centered? And are we relaxed and prepared for our session here today? If we are, or if we are not, may we be aware of how we feel right here, right now at this present moment, as we focus on our study group here today. And today's topic is gonna to be tips to practice prenatal yoga. So, so we're just gonna go over a couple of tips today that we can go over with our clients when we are teaching prenatal yoga. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question. If you had a prenatal mom coming to you, what type of tips will you give the mom if she's coming to you and she's just looking for guidance and she's excited about pregnancy or maybe she is not? Because keep in mind, everyone isn't excited about being pregnant but many people are. So if you have a mom who's coming to you and they are excited or not, what tips, what advice, what words of wisdom will you give to your prenatal patient? I'm sorry, your prenatal client. So that's something to think about. So a lot of moms come to you for prenatal yoga because they are trying to simply find a nice way to center, soothe, and relax their mind and their bodies during their pregnancy. Now, maybe they came to you because of a doctor's order or maybe they came to you because they have been doing yoga throughout their life and they feel as though yoga during pregnancy is a nice, beautiful bonding experience for mom and baby. There will be many different reasons why you get clients for prenatal yoga. Whatever the reason may be, may we acknowledge them and acknowledge their reasoning for coming to us and you know, being thankful for them for choosing us to help them or to assist them in their journey and doing them, which is being pregnant, moms to be, all right? So um, prenatal yoga is an, has an abundant of benefits um, to help mom along her pregnancy. Um, a lot of times when moms do prenatal yoga, um, we are flowing through the series of different yeah. unique techniques that we go through with mom to help her build her strength within her body. And in many cases within her mind as well. So that's what yoga does for the mom. It is building strength, both mentally and physically. Um, 
a lot of nice poses that um, I know when I teach prenatal yoga, a lot of poses moms like to get into is that goddess stance. A goddess stance is a lovely pose that moms tend to do that I like to do during my yoga practice because it just puts mom in that pose. It strengthens the lower parts of her body and is also working the pelvic floor. So a goddess pose is a beautiful pose um, that we can help mom with. But of course, there are, there are many, many poses. I'm just um, reading from the article here. And one of the top poses this article speaks about is um, goddess pose. Apparently, it strengthens the lower parts of the body and it works. It helps with that pelvic floor. It helps, you know, strengthen the pelvic area for labor and delivery. Of course, when it comes to yoga, yoga is all about the breath as well as the movement. So we may have moms coming to us and we are showing them different techniques and benefits of breathing of the breath and what the breath does to the body. And, you know, many moms who um, are pregnant, they may even take Lama's classes because Lama's classes focuses on the breath. So we as yoga, as prenatal yoga instructors, we are doing a little bit of everything here with, with mom, strengthening the body, strengthening the mind, working with the breath and showing them safe and effective poses that they can do with us or when they are home alone or at the office or wherever they may be and they just want to get into a pose or get into a seated position and go inward. This is where prenatal yoga comes into play at. And of course, um, the breath is a beautiful thing because it helps with labor and delivery. You know, um, when moms are pregnant and when those contractions hit, a lot of people, not just moms, when we have, when we experience pain, we tend to pause, freeze up, hold our breath until the pain is gone. Maybe take a notice of how you felt if you had previous pregnancies or how you felt if you experienced some type of pain or Let's just say you go into the dentist and they're ready to give you that first injection inside your gum to numb the area of your mouth. Do we or do we not hold our breath when we experience pain? A lot of times um, during labor contractions, you'll see a lot of OB nurses and midwives, you know, say this, that moms hold their breath during that contraction because of the pain. They just want to stay still and hold that breath. And what that is, it intensifies that contraction, that contraction. And that's where the Maz classes come into play at. It teaches mom how to breathe through the contraction, which will in return decrease some of the pain. Of course, you're going to have pain and labor, but when you breathe through the pain, taking those nice breaths literally helps with the contraction because, and the science behind that is, when a person holds their breath, they stop breathing and it intensifies that contraction. Yes, it is a medical fact. Holding the breath will literally make that contraction feel stronger because we're not breathing, we're not moving, we're pausing, we're stopping, and it's intensifying that contraction. So the breath is power, and the breath can literally help mom through those labor pains. So please keep that in mind. Of course, yoga helps um, develop a deeper connection between mom and baby. A lot of times when I'm teaching my yoga classes, I like to say, mom, maybe we can place our top hand on our tummy and our bottom hand on our tummy and simply have mom, you know, just relaxing and touching her tummy gives um, mom just a little me time for mom, but also me time for baby. And um, yoga just helps with that connection. Now, if we have a mom who isn't quite happy about being pregnant because it happens, prenatal yoga, connecting the mom to baby, Doing mindfulness techniques, allowing the mom to be aware of baby within her body can help mom grow to be happy about the pregnancy. Because everyone doesn't want to be pregnant, and it, most people do, but some people do not. And it is true that some people just don't and just isn't happy during pregnancy. But that's where prenatal yoga can come into play because we can help mom connect with baby. And one is by putting place in a palm on the tummy, we also can place mom in a fetal pose, which is lying on the side with a pillow between their thighs and maybe a pillow underneath their neck for comfort. And they're laying in a fetal pose, just like the fetus that is within their tummies. So placing a mom in a fetal pose is helping them think about the baby within their stomach, is helping connect mom with baby as they are laying and relaxing with their eyes closed or gaze down and their fetal pose going inward 
focusing on self and focusing on baby. But there's plenty of poses we can put mom into. These are just a few. What poses do you think you would put mom in if you were teaching a prenatal class with a mom who wasn't happy about being pregnant? And what pose do you think you would put a mom in in a prenatal class who's excited about being pregnant? Maybe she just found out she's pregnant. What poses will you do with her? Maybe she's five months, six months and beyond and baby's always kicking or the baby gets active during prenatal yoga classes. You have a mom, she's coming to you with a private session and you know, every time she does yoga, baby's acting, baby's kicking, baby's moving around. What poses will you put mom in during those sessions? And to each their own, we'll all come up with our own different types of techniques to be with mom. But I know for me, I will put mom in a lot of seated positions, having her touching her belly, filling her belly. And if mom wants to bring hubby into the prenatal class with her, that can be a beautiful thing, just like in the mom's class. Allow mom and hubby, mom and boyfriend or life partner to be in a yoga class together. And it is, it is a bonding experience between partners and baby. What ideas can you come up with when it comes to prenatal sessions? Something to think about here. Yeah. But we all know that self-care is a necessity and that's where yoga comes in at because it teaches mom about self-care and how essential it is to take care of self. And if we are practicing yoga and we are learning and teaching moms practices and techniques for self-care, in return, once baby arrives, <clears throat> mom may continue to do those practices once baby comes. Because as we know, once baby arrives, moms get super busy. They don't have time for self, they burn themselves out. But a lot of times when they practice self-care and enjoy prenatal yoga, a lot of times they may go into postnatal yoga. They are going to continue, they may continue their relaxation journey and now they have baby with them. And maybe we can come up with prenatal, postnatal sessions, that's having baby laying next to mom. So what ideas, what class designs and sequences could we come up with if we have a postnatal mom? What type of sequences will we develop for mom and baby? See, teaching prenatal yoga, we can come up with any class design that our hearts, minds, and souls desire, whatever we can become creative with, we can make up a class plan. So I'm just simply giving ideas of what you might do during prenatal classes, what poses you might do during postnatal classes, how can you help mom connect to baby during a postnatal class? It is a beautiful thing. So maybe we can give that some thought or maybe even jot down some notes so that when we do start these prenatal classes, we already have some ideas in store. We're not starting from scratch. We already have something ready to go. Okay, so and we're gonna go over a couple of tips as I think the name of this article was tips for practicing prenatal yoga. So we just went over a couple things regarding prenatal yoga, which were also tips. Now this article gave us additional tips. Number one, number one tip is to stay hydrated. And I would like to ask, why do you think staying hydrated is important, is essential? Of course, staying hydrated even when you're not pregnant is essential, but if a person is pregnant, why do you think it is essential that they stay hydrated during your class, even though they may not be sweating a whole lot? Because, you know, we don't want to overwork the body there. We want to place them in poses, but we don't want to overexert the body. So maybe we can take a moment to think about why staying hydrated during yoga, especially when you're pregnant, why is it essential? Something to think about, maybe write down some notes, okay? Never allowing the mom to overheat, overwork, or overextend the body. Always being mindful of that and just allowing her to just relax and soothe during her prenatal yoga flow. And tip number two, staying off the back. Now, why do you think it's important that moms stay off the back during that pregnancy? Now, yes, of course, when mom is first pregnant, first trimester, they can lay on their backs and you know do a whole lot of um, shavasana poses, recline positions, um, maybe um, when they're first pregnant. But well, however, when they become second trimester, third trimester, we often 
tend to avoid putting mom on her back. And what do you think the reason or one of the reasons could be for us? Why do you think we do that? As yes, taking this time to write down some notes to jot down why it is important to be mindful of the months. You can have a client that's one month, two months, three months, okay? You can have a client that's five months and beyond. So those are gonna be two different types of yoga classes. And that's why we must be mindful of who, who we are teaching and what's going on. Now, if we're doing a one-on-one, -on -one, those will be very nice, you know, personal yoga classes. But sometimes we might be doing a prenatal yoga session in a studio. So we will be doing a lot of modifications during that class because what one pregnant mom may be able to do in that class, another mom may not. So we have to be very aware as yoga instructors and very mindful as yoga instructors on who is what, how many months the patient, the client is. And we're going to be doing, doing cues. For example, okay, everyone relax in Shavasana. Okay, that is a reclined position laying on their backs. However, anyone who was beyond their first trimester, maybe you can roll onto your side and relax in a fetal position. If it feels good, maybe put a pillow behind your back. Just a nice modification. So we just did two poses in one breath. We gave one mom the option to go into Shavasana. We gave the other mom the option to go into a fetal pose. Um, those are just options. Um, and just so you know, prenatal classes are considered to be a specialty class. So prenatal classes tend to um, pay more than a you know regular yoga class. So you will be able to charge a little bit more of an increased um, price when you're doing a specialties prenatal postnatal class. So yes, staying off of our backs. Why is this so? Why must mom stay off of her back? Okay, this article says your baby's growing weight puts pressure on the vena cava. Mm -hmm. which is a major um, vein that brings blood to the heart. So, so when we get bigger and our tummies get nice and round and big and we're laying on our backs, that pressure pushes onto that vena cava and it slows the blood flow. Therefore, we want to ensure that we are not putting mom on her back. We are having her relax on her side, maybe in a wide legged child's pose, puppy pose, any pose you can come up with that isn't having them laying directly flat on their backs. Now, you may see that some prenatal um, classes will have mom in a, in a reclined position on her backs, but they'll be using props. Props are your friend. They may have their hips slightly elevated. So really, they're not really laying on their back. And with the hips slightly elevated with that pillow, is taking the pressure off of that vena cava. But again, we have to be mindful of what we are doing and how we are teaching these classes as a prenatal yoga instructor. And we have to be mindful that they are doing the poses correctly. Because if mom's laying on her back and that, that vena cava has pressure applied to it and that blood circulating isn't, isn't flowing well, it can cause mom to feel dizzy. She may pass out and she may even feel nauseous. So we want to immediately ask them to roll over to their side, put a pillow between their thighs, something underneath their necks, and just have them relax and soothe there for a couple of, of breaths. Okay. And if mom isn't getting better, then you as a yoga instructor and as the mom will always be mindful of, do I need to call, you know, 911? Do I need to call for help? Never be afraid to call for help if you feel as though that the client needs it. Listen to your intuition. Be aware of your client, how they look when they came in and how they look now, how they were breathing when they breathing when they came in and how they are breathing now. Are they are they are they sweaty now? Do they look like they're they're becoming pale? These are signs and symptoms that we must be aware of when we're teaching not just prenatal yoga any classes, but definitely when we're teaching prenatal yoga classes, because at the drop of a dime, one wrong move can cause you know things to go chaotic. That's why we must be mindful and aware of and always pay attention to our prenatal students. Okay, so please keep that in mind. So stay in Tip number three, because this is a very hot thing going on right now and everyone's trying to do it. Can I take hot yoga when I'm pregnant? And it's a big debate going on right now, but many doctors are still saying no. Why? Because we don't want the body to overheat. Hot yoga can be dangerous and they are saying no. However, if a mom ha has been doing yoga for years and she has been doing hot yoga for years, mom may have built up a tolerance for heat. Doctors and midwives still say it's not that safe. So we have to be mindful of this. Um, I will not recommend a mom to take a hot yoga class, but that would be her choice to do it. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it. Of course, some people may still say, I'm going to do it. I love it. 
and to each their own. Just please follow, um, advise them to follow, you know, the doctor's orders and listen to their bodies and definitely stay hydrated and maybe have some nice cool water um, with them doing prenatal yoga, um, doing hot yoga sessions. And drinking the water is good, but also put pouring that water on your body doing um, hot yoga if you're going to be pregnant helps cool down the body. See, drinking the water helps you stay hydrated, but pouring that water on your flesh helps soothe and cool the body down a little more. So if you must do hot yoga, which we are not recommending, have nice cold ice water and pour that water on your body. Feel the water relaxing and soothing on your body. Okay, so keeping that in mind. So we're gonna move on from that. Um, tip number four, stay balanced. Tip number four, staying balanced when you're pregnant. And what does that mean? Um, being mindful of the stance of the pregnant mom. Sometimes the balance is off when mom's pregnant. Their balance isn't quite what it used to be. So this article speaks about staying balanced, staying aware, being aware of how you feel in the movements that you are in, um, especially when they get to the bigger months and their, and their tummies get bigger, you may find that the balance just goes off even more. So when we are putting them in standing positions and, and um, tadasanas, maybe we're saying come into a wide-legged tadasana as opposed to a regular tadasana because we want to make sure that they have that stance and that balance so that if they should get a little dizzy, they have that stance that's going to keep them up and help them to stand nice and strong and solid. We also want to make sure that um, when we get to those bigger months past that first trimester, we want to make avoiding abdominal work. So no bolt poses or, you know, um, bolt pose variations, wide-legged Vs. We want to make sure that we are avoiding those because that is applying pressure onto the tummy and we don't want to cause any breaks and hicks, okay? So please keep that in mind. Um, no major back bends, for example, camel pose. Now you may see a lot of moms doing camel pose, but maybe they are advanced yogis and their body is just super flexible. But um, when I teach prenatal yoga class, I may go into a um, camel prep, which is simply just placing the palms at the lower parts of the back and simply slightly leaning back and head relaxes between the shoulder blades. But I'm not going to go into that full camel, maybe even a half camel. Again, so um, that comes with us knowing our clients and knowing what they are capable of and what they can do. If this is my first time having this client and this is and they are new to yoga, I'm not going to put them in a camel pose. I might do a camel prep. Um, up until a certain amount of weeks or months, but I am not going to put them into a camel, but to each their own, because I have seen yoga classes with prenatal yoga and they're eight months in their camel pose and their bellies are sticking up in the air. But that's just something that I won't do because I don't want them again because of the stance to lose their balance and fall over. So I'm, I'm always going to err on the side of caution, you know, and just play it safe at all times. But every yoga teacher will have their own. So no abdominal workouts, um, no back bends, and of course, no deep twists. Now, we're coming into a seated twist. We may can simply slightly twist a little bit and gaze over that shoulder. Switch sides slightly, twist the body, gazing over that opposite shoulder and feeling that twist. But see, this here was kind of a deep twist. See that there? And I kind of did the deep twist because I feel like my body needs it. I was sitting in this chair for 30 minutes. However, if we have a client and they're big and they have nice big old bellies, we want to go into a subtle twist, just slightly twisting and slightly gazing. Their bodies, their tummies are barely twisted. They can twist their neck as far as they can, but we don't want to twist that tummy. Just a little twist, gazing over that shoulder. That's it. So we want to keep these things in mind because you're saying it's just a little twist. Yes, it is a little twist, but when you have a big belly and a baby in there, those little twists have a major impact. Um, <clears throat> and of course, especially when a mom gets bigger, there's lack of space in that belly for mom. Speaking of space, you may see that sometimes pregnant moms, they slouch, oh, they just, they're, they're tired, right? So they want to slouch their bodies and, oh, I'm tired today. And they're slouching. Reminding mom, prenatal classes can remind mom to keep that proper posture because when we keep our backs up nice and long we are creating okay so we can be move this jacket we can be slouching see that there mm -hmm. but when we keep our bodies up nice and long we create that extra space for baby and that's what we want because a slouch because a slouch body takes away from space a nice long gated spinal cord 
creates extra space in the tummy for baby. It makes mom feel better. It makes baby feel better. Now, um, those who are bigger in their months, or if you remember, if you were pregnant before, maybe you're um, prenatal teaching, and um, and remember how it felt with that the thread right under the tummy and baby's foot or whatever is like poking underneath there, and we like, oh, my back hurt, and we're bending over, and we're not sitting right because we didn't know. That causes more pain. But see, when we're giving teaching prenatal yoga classes, we are reminding them to keep their back straight, shoulders relaxed down and away from the ears. It's creating an extra space in the tummy for baby, and it's also making mom feel much better. Mm -hmm. So always keeping that spinal cord nice and straight. It also helps um, decrease some back pain. Yes, it does, because a lot of times back pain comes from not sitting right, not proper posture, but keeping that posture right helps make that spinal cord nice and long. It's working those back muscles. And it's just, you know, just building a strength within the lower backs by having control of your back, which gives you control of your body. Mm -hmm. So balance, balance, balance is key. Remembering that mom sometimes uses their center of balance. Um, of course, I want to just add this in real quick. I wrote a note, I wrote a note, no inversions. You know, if they're first couple of weeks, maybe if, if they choose, they want to get into inversions and you want to do it with them and you know them, maybe we can go into a wide-legged um, forward fold, connecting a hand to the ankles. That's that's an inversion. A dolphin, those are inversions as well. Um, but we don't want to be putting them on an actual headstands. We're going to avoid that during our classes. I don't care if I had you and I know what you can do. You're pregnant now and sometimes the bodies just, just don't work the same when you're pregnant. So, you're just pregnant, I might put you into a wide-legged forward fold. I might put you into a dolphin or poses that are similar to those, but I'm not gonna be flowing the mom. I'm not gonna be cueing the mom to go into a headstand because I just like to play it safe. You know, and if mom wanna do it at her own practice, when, when she goes home, an experienced yogi will, will not only do yoga with you, they will also do yoga on their own time as well. Because doing yoga with a professional every day, like a live session, can become expensive because it's not like a gym where you pay $30 a month and get unlimited yoga classes. Now, for some gyms you do, but for studios, yoga studios, a lot of times people are paying for packages, six classes for $50. I'm just throwing um, numbers out there, but the yoga instructor can, the, the yoga studio can make the prices whatever they want. It's your business, but most studios don't charge a monthly fee. Maybe they're, maybe they will start eventually. But right now, I know when I pay for my classes, I'm paying for packages. I'm paying for five classes for a certain amount of um, money. And of course, the classes last for a lifetime as long as the studio's open. Um, I try to stay away from yoga studios that says $59 for five classes must be used within two months. I don't know. Mm -mm. I want to pay $59 for five yoga classes and I can use them for the lifetime of the longevity of the yoga studio being open. Because that means this $60 can last me six months, okay? because I'm gonna do my self-practice. And then when I decide I wanna go around people, then I'll go to the yoga studios, you know? Because as a yoga instructor, I don't really need to take yoga classes, but I do like to support other studios, right? So I do buy packages, I do support, I do show love. Mm -hmm. So um, we just threw that in there, but it's, it's always good to throw extra stuff inside of our yoga practice talks. So, mm -hmm. but our point was, stay with deep abdominal twist, back bends, um, abdominal um, crunches, we want to be, be aware of that, and no inversions, because these are things that can cause, you know, issues down the line. So again, safe and sorry. Prenatal yoga helps mom relax, soothe, be mindful of herself, as well as baby. It helps mom go inward, and it helps mom simply just prepare her mind and body for birth. Yoga is known to, in many cases, help with anxiety of labor. A lot of times people, especially when it's their first baby, they are uh, they are very anxious about the labor pains, how it's gonna be, how it's gonna feel, how long the labor's gonna be. Well, when we are mindful, we become aware of, we no longer try to rush the labor process. We are enjoying every moment of our labor and our delivery without being anxious, without rushing, without trying to make the experience happen. We are enjoying it and take a note of it and being mindful of it. That's what prenatal yoga could do. And that's what it does for a lot of moms. It takes away from their anxiety. And most importantly, it prepares the body for labor. There's a lot of exercises that we do to prepare the body for labor. A lot of hip openers that we can do. A lot of exercises that can build strength to the um, pelvic floor. For example, goddess, yogi squat, even a squat. 
those are poses that help prep the body. Yoga helps mom with her awareness of self, of her strengths within, and what needs to be done in her life. It's mindfulness. It's going inward, it's being aware, and it is without judgment. That is the beauty of prenatal yoga. Listen to your body, listen to your mind, and listen to your soul. Of course, we as yoga instructors, we are just the guide. But when we are cueing our students, they have the final say on what pose and how they want to be in the position that they are in. But of course, we will intervene if you notice that they are in a wrong pose that can cause injury. But yoga students, prenatal yoga students, postnatal yoga students should always be encouraged to listen to their body. Our voices are just a guide as yoga instructors. We are guiding them into poses that are beneficial and soothing and strengthening to them. Allowing the student to be in their moment that feels good for them. Intervening only if they are asking us to touch them and help with positioning during a class or intervening if we feel and see that they are maybe going to cause some injury to themselves. We definitely want to intervene then because if we can prevent an injury because we see it coming because we are experienced yoga instructors, let's intervene. But if we don't need to intervene and a client is happy and loving, and their practice and they're doing the poses right, but they're not in a pose that you cue them into. For example, high lunge, warrior one. For example, child's pose, puppy pose. But this is the pose their body wanna be in. Let them be, baby. Let them enjoy the moment, you know? Again, being aware and being mindful of ourselves as well as our clients is essential. Peace and blessings be to you. Thank you so much for joining. This is Vanessa Jackson with Online Yoga School Prenatal Course. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope I see you next time. Peace and blessings. Namaste. Thank you. Bye.